These are the scriptures that will help you flee temptation and fornication. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 21. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body, we have many members and the members do not all have the same function. So we, though many, are one body in Christ and individually members one of another. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18. Flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but the sexually immoral person sins against his own body. Matthew chapter 26, verse 41. Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. James chapter 4, verse 7. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 16. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 22. So flee youthful passions and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace along with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. Matthew chapter five, verse 28. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in his heart. James chapter one, verse 14. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Ephesians chapter six. Verse 17, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Colossians chapter three, verse two, set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. Philippians chapter four, verse eight. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, Whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Romans chapter 14, verse 13. Therefore, let us not pass judgment on one another any longer but rather decide never to put a stumbling block or hindrance in the way of a brother. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 11. But as for you, O man of God, flee these things. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, steadfastness, gentleness. James chapter 1, verse 13. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who is in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 9, but if they cannot exercise self-control, they should marry, 
for it is better to marry than to burn with passion. Proverbs chapter 4, verses 14 through 15. Do not enter the path of the wicked, and do not walk in the way of the evil. Avoid it. Do not go on it. Turn away from it and pass on. James chapter 1, verses 1 through 27. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes in dispersion, greetings. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given him. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. It is through this craving that some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pains. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having fasted on the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 through 11. Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the spirit of our God. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1 through 21. This is how one should regard us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required of stewards that they must be found trustworthy. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged by you or by any human court. In fact, I do not even judge myself, for I am not aware of anything against myself, but I am not thereby acquitted. It is the Lord who judges me, Therefore, do not pronounce judgment before the time, before the Lord comes, who will bring to the light the things now hidden in darkness, and who will disclose the purpose of the heart. Then each one will receive his commendation from God. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1 through 23. But I, brothers, could not address you as spiritual people, but as people of flesh, as infants in Christ, I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. And even now you are not yet ready, for you are still of the flesh. For while there is jealousy and strife among you, and you not of the flesh and behaving only in a human way. For when one says, I follow Paul, and another, I follow Apollo, are you not being merely human? What then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants through whom you believe, as the Lord assigned to each. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 through 16. And I, when I came to you, brothers, did not come proclaiming to you the testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom. For I declared to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling. And my speech and my message were not implausible words of wisdom, 
but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 1 through 31. Paul called the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus. And our brother Sosthenes to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints together with all those who in every place call upon the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that was given you in Christ Jesus, that in every way you were enriched in him in all speech and all knowledge. Romans chapter 16, verse 1 through 27. I commend to you our sister, Phoebe, a servant of the church of Kincre, that you may welcome her in the Lord, a way worthy of the saints, and help her in whatever she may need from you. For she has been a patron of many and of myself as well. Greet Prisa and Aquila, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus, who risked their necks for my life, to whom not only I give thanks, but all the churches of the Gentiles give thanks as well. Greet also the church in their house. Greet my beloved Empanatus, who was the first convert to Christ in Asia. Romans chapter 15, verses 1 through 33. We who are strong have an obligation to bear with the, the feelings of the weak and not to please ourselves. Let each of us please his neighbor for his good, to build him up. For Christ did not please himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of those who reproach you fell on me. For whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, that through endurance and through the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Christ Jesus. Romans chapter 14, verses 1 through 23. As for the one who is weak in faith, welcome him, but not to quarrel over opinion. One person believes he may eat anything, while the weak person eats only vegetables. Let not the one who eats despise the one who abstains, and let not the one who abstains pass judgment on the one who eats, for God has welcomed him. Who are you to pass judgment on the servant of another? It is before his own master that he stands or falls, and he will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make him stand. One person esteems one day as better than another, while another esteems all days alike. Each one should be fully convinced in his own mind. Romans chapter 13, verse 14. But put on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make no provision for the flesh, to gratify its desires. Romans chapter 13, verses 8 through 10. Owe no one anything except to love each other. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not covet. And any other commandment are summed up in this word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 21. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, to not think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body, we may have many members, and the members do not all have the same function. So we, though many, are one body in Christ, one individually, 
members one of another. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 through 22 and you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked following the course of this world following the prince of power of the air the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh carrying out the desires of the body and the mind and were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespass, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. Galatians chapter 6 verse 7. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, they will also reap. Galatians chapter 5 verse 25. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. Galatians chapter 5 verse 16. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Galatians chapter 4 verse 4 through 5. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. Galatians chapter 3, verse 1 through 29. O oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? It was before your eyes that Jesus Christ was publicly portrayed as crucified. Let me ask you only this. Did you receive the spirit by works of the law or by hearing with faith? Are you so foolish having begun by the spirit? Are you now being perfected by the flesh? Did you suffer so many things in vain? If indeed it was in vain. Does he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you do so by the works of the law or by hearing with faith? 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 20 through 21. For I fear that perhaps when I come, I may find you not as I wish, and that you may find me not as you wish, that perhaps there may be quarreling, jealousy, anger, hostility, slander, gossip, conceit, and disorder. I fear that when I come again, my God may humble me before you, and I may have to mourn over many of those who sinned earlier and have not repented of the impurity, sexual immorality, and sensuality that they have practiced. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 18 flee from sexual immorality every other sin a person commits is outside the body but the sexual immoral person sins against his own body hebrews chapter 13 verse 4 let marriage be held in honor among all and let the marriage bed be undefiled for God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous. Colossians chapter 3 verse 5. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 9. Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 1 through 20. When one of you has a grievance against another, does he dare go to the law before the unrighteous instead of the saints? Or do you not know that the saints will judge the world? 
And if the world is to be judged by you, are you incompetent to try trivial cases? Do you not know that we are to judge angels? How much more than matters pertaining to this life? So if you have such cases, why do you lay them before those who have no standing in the church? I say this to your shame. Can it be that there is no one among you wise enough to settle a dispute between the brothers? Ephesians chapter 5 verse 3. But sexual immorality and all impurity or covetousness must not be named among you as is proper among saints. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1 through 40. Now, concerning the matters about which you wrote, it is good for a man not to have sexual relations with a woman. But because of the temptation to the sexual immorality, each man should have his own. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 1 through 40. Now, concerning the matters about which you wrote, it is good for a man not to have sexual relations with a woman, but because of the temptation to sexual immorality, each man should have his own wife and each woman her own husband. The husband should give to his wife her conjugal rights and likewise the wife to her husband. For the wife does not have authority over her own body but the husband does. Likewise, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. Do not deprive one another, except perhaps by agreement for a limited time that you may devote yourselves to prayer, but then come together again so that Satan may not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. Matthew chapter five, verse 32. But I say to you that everyone who divorces his wife, except on the ground of sexual immorality, makes her commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Exodus chapter 20, verse 14. You shall not commit adultery. Jude chapter one, verse seven. Just as Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding cities, which likewise indulged in sexual immorality and pursued unnatural desire, serve as an example by undergoing a punishment of eternal fire. Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 through 21. Now the works of the flesh are evident, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Matthew chapter 19 verse 9. And I say to you, whoever divorces his wife except for sexual immorality and marries another commits adultery. Genesis chapter 2 verse 24. Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Revelation chapter 21 verse 8. But as for the cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, as for murderers, the sexual immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 through 40. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of, the, of things not seen. For by it, the people of old received their commendation. By faith, we understand 
that the universe was created by the word of God. So that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. By faith, Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain, through which he was commended as righteous. God commending him by accepting his gifts. And through his faith, though he died, he still speaks. By faith, Enoch was taken up so that he should not see death. And he was not found because God had taken him. Now before he was taken, he was commended as having pleased God. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 18 through 20. Flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but the sexually immoral person sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 10. Nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 through 13. It is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you, and of a kind that is not tolerated even among pagans. For a man has his father's wife, and you are arrogant. Ought you not rather to mourn? Let him who has done this be removed from among you. For though absent in body, I am present in spirit. And as is present, I have already pronounced judgment on the one who did such a thing. When you are assembled in the name of the Lord Jesus and my spirit is present, with the power of our Lord Jesus, you are to deliver this man to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, so that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord. Leviticus chapter 20 verse 10. If a man commits adultery with the wife of his neighbor, both the adulterer and the adulteress shall surely be put to death. Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. And God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Revelation chapter 17 verses 1 through 18. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and said to me, Come, I will show you the judgment of the great prostitute who is seated on many waters, with whom the king of the earth hath committed sexual immorality, and with the wine of whose sexual immorality the dwellers on the earth have become drunk. And he carried me away in the spirit into a wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast that was full of blasphemous names, and it had seven heads and ten horns. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet, and adorned with gold and jewels and pearls, holding in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and the impurities of her sexual immorality. And on her forehead was written a name of mystery, Babylon, the great mother of prostitutes and of earth's abominations. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 1 through 22. Likewise, wives, be subject to your own husbands, so that even if some do not obey the word, they may be won without a word by the conduct of their wives. When they see your respectful and pure conduct, do not let your adorning be external, the braiding of hair and putting on of gold jewelry or the clothing you wear, but let your adorning be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which in God's sight is very precious. 
For this is how the holy women who hoped in God used to adorn themselves by submitting to their own husbands. Hebrews chapter 13 verses 1 through 25. Let brotherly love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Remember those who are in, in prison, as though in prison with them, and those who are mistreated, since you also are in the body. Let marriage be held in honor among all, and let the marriage bed be undefiled. For God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous. Keep your life free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave nor forsake you. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 29. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great of a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself, so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. And have you forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as sons? My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor be weary when reproved by him. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 2. For you know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus. Galatians chapter 5, verse 1 through 26. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. Look, I, Paul, say to you that if you accept circumcision, Christ will be of no advantage to you. I testify again to every man who accepts circumcision that he is obligated to keep the whole law. You are severed from Christ. You who would be justified by law, you have fallen away from grace. For through the Spirit, by faith, we ourselves eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 1 through 34. Be imitators of me, as I am of Christ. Now I commend you because you remember me in everything and maintain the traditions even as I delivered them to you. But I want you to understand that the head of every man is Christ, the head of his wife is her husband, and the head of Christ is God. Every man who prays or prophesies with his head covered dishonors his head. But every wife who prays or prophesies with her head uncovered dishonors her head since it is the same as if her head were shaven. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 through 13. Now, concerning food offered to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. This knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. If anyone imagines that he knows something, he does not yet know as if he ought to know. But if anyone loves God, he is known by God. Therefore, as to eating of food offered to idols, we know that an idol has no real existence and that there is no God but one. For although there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as indeed there are many gods and many lords. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 2. But because of the temptation to sexual immorality, each man should have his own wife and each woman her own husband. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1. It is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you 
and of a kind that is not tolerated even among pagans. For a man has his father's wife. Romans chapter 13, verse 1 through 14. Let every person be subject to the governing authorities. For there is no authority from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities resists what God has appointed, and those who resist will incur judgment. For rulers are not a terror to good conduct, but to bad. Would you have no fear of the one who is in authority? Then do what is good, and you will receive his approval. For he is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain. For he is the servant of God, an abogen who carries out God's wrath on the wrongdoer. Therefore, one must be in subjection, not only to avoid God's wrath, but also for the sake of conscience. Romans chapter 11, verse 1 through 36. I ask, then... Has God rejected his people? By no means. For I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. Do you not know what the scripture says of Elijah? How he appeals to God against Israel? Lord, they have killed your prophets. They have demolished your altars and I alone am left, and they seek my life. But what is God's reply to him? I have kept for myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to Baal. So too, at the present time, there is a remnant chosen by grace. Romans chapter 10, verse one through 21. Brothers, my heart's desire and prayer to God for them is that they may be saved. For I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. For being ignorant of the righteousness of God and seeking to establish their own, they did not submit to God's righteousness. For Christ is the end of law for righteousness to everyone who believes. For Moses writes about the righteousness that is based on the law that the person who does the commandments shall live by them. Romans chapter 1, verse 1 through 32. Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand through his prophets and the holy scriptures, concerning his son, who was descended from David, according to the flesh and was declared to be the son of God in power according to the spirit of holiness by his resurrection from the dead. Jesus Christ our Lord, through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith for the sake of his name among all nations. Acts chapter 15 verse 1 through 41. But some men came down from Judea and were teaching the brothers, unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. And after Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and debate with them, Paul and Barnabas and some of the others were appointed to go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and the elders about this question. So being sent on their way, by the church, they passed through both Phoenicia and Samaria, describing in detail the conversation of the Gentiles and brought great joy to all the brothers. When they came to Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church and the apostles and the elders, and they declared all that God had done with them. But some believers who belonged to the party of the Pharisees rose up and said, It is necessary to circumcise them and to order them to keep the law of Moses. John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. 
Matthew chapter 24, verses 1 through 51. Jesus left the temple and was going away. When his disciples came to point out to him the buildings of the temple, but he answered them, You see all these? Do you not? Truly I say to you, there will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. As he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when will these be? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the close of age? And Jesus answered them, See that no one leads you astray. For many will come in my name saying, I am Christ, and they will lead many astray. Matthew chapter 15 verses 1 through 39. Then Pharisees and scribes came to Jesus from Jerusalem and said, Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? For they do not wash their hands when they eat. He answered them, And why do you break the commandment of God for the sake of your tradition? For God commanded, Honor your father and your mother. And whoever reviles father or mother must surely die. But you say, If anyone tells his father or his mother, what you would have gained from me is given to God. Matthew chapter 7 verse 1 through 29. Judge not that you be not judged. For with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged. And with the measure you use it, will be measured to you. Why do you seek the speck that is in your brother's eye? But do not notice the log that is in your own eye. Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when there is the log in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Matthew chapter 5, verse 28. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Matthew chapter 5 verse 1 through 48. Seeing the crowds, he went up to the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom in heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Leviticus chapter 20 verse 13 If a man lies with a male as with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood is upon them. Leviticus chapter 18 verse 22 You shall not lie with a male as with a woman. It is an abomination. Revelation chapter 22 verse 15 Outside are the dogs and sorcerers and the sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. Revelation chapter 22 verse 12. Behold, I am coming soon, bringing my recompense with me to repay everyone for what he has done. Revelation chapter 19 verse 1 through 21. After this, I heard what seemed to be the loud voice of a great multitude in heaven, crying out, Hallelujah! Salvation and glory and power belong to our God, for his judgments are true and just. For he has judged the great prostitute who corrupted the earth with her immorality and has avenged on her blood of his servants. Once more they cried out, Hallelujah! The smoke from her goes up forever and ever. And the 24 elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshiped God, who was seated on the throne, saying, Amen, Hallelujah! And from the throne came a voice saying, Praise our God, all you his servants, you who fear him, small and great.
Revelation chapter 18, verse 1 through 24. After this, I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority, and the earth was made bright with his glory. And he called out with a mighty voice, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. She has become a dwelling place for demons, a haunt for every unclean spirit, a haunt for every unclean bird, a haunt for every unclean and detestable beast. For all nations have drunk the wine of the passion of her sexual immorality, and the kings of the earth have committed immorality with her, and the merchants of the earth have grown rich from the power of her luxurious living. Then I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, lest you take part in her sins, lest you share in her plagues, for her sins are heaped high as heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. Revelation chapter 10, verse 1 through 11. Then I saw another mighty angel coming down from heaven, wrapped in a cloud, with a rainbow over his head. And his face was like the sun, and his legs like pillars of fire. He had a little scroll open in his hand. And he set his right foot on the sea and his left foot on the land. And he called out with a loud voice like a roaring lion. When he called out, the seven thunders sounded. And when the seven thunders had sounded, I was about to write. But I heard a voice from heaven saying, Seal up what the seven thunders have said and do not write it down. And the angel whom I saw standing on the sea and on the land raised his right hand to heaven. Jude chapter 1 verse 1 through 25. Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to those who are called, beloved, and God the Father and kept for Jesus Christ, may mercy, peace, and love be multiplied to you. Beloved, although I was very eager to write to you about our common salvation, I found it necessary to write appealing to you to contend for the faith that was once for all delivered to the saints. For certain people have crept in unnoticed and who long ago were designed for this condemnation. Ungodly people who pervert the grace of our God into sensuality and deny our only master and Lord Jesus Christ. Now I want to remind you, although you once fully knew it, that Jesus, who saved a people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not believe. 1 John chapter 2, verse 17. And the world is passing away along with its desires. But whoever does the will of God abides forever. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 through 16. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and pride in possession is not from the Father, but it is from the world. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 16. As he does in all his letters, when he speaks in them of these matters, there are some things in them that are hard to understand, which the ignorant and unstable twist up their own destruction, as they do the other scriptures. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1 through 25. So put away all malice and all deceit and all hypocrisy, and envy and all slander like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk that by it you may grow up into salvation if indeed you have tasted the lord is good as you come into him a living stone rejected by men but in the sight of god chosen and precious you yourselves like living stones are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood 
to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 1 through 13. Now, the point in what we are saying is this. We have such a high priest, one who is seated at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heaven, a minister in the holy places, in the true tent that the Lord set up, not man. For every high priest is appointed to offer gifts and sacrifices. Thus, it is necessary for this priest to have also something to offer. Now, if he were on earth, he would not be a priest at all, since there are priests who offer gifts according to the law. They serve a copy and shadow of the heavenly things. For when Moses was about to erect the tent, he was instructed by God, saying, See, that you make everything according to the pattern that was shown you on the mountain. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1-17 through 17. Now concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered together to him, we ask you, brothers, not to be quickly shaken in mind or alarmed, either by a spirit or a spoken word, or a letter seeming to be from us, to the effect that the day of the Lord has come. Let no one deceive you in any way, for that day will not come unless the rebellion comes first, and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction, who opposes and exalts himself against every so-called God or object of worship, so that he takes his seat in the temple of God proclaiming himself to be God. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 1 through 12. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We ought always to give thanks to God for you, brothers, as is right, because your faith is growing abundantly, and the love of every one of you for another is increasing. Therefore, we ourselves boast about you in the churches of God for your steadfastness and faith in all your persecutions and in the afflictions that, work, that you are enduring. This is evidence of the righteous judgment of God that you may be considered worthy of the kingdom of God for which you are also suffering. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 14. And we urge you, brothers, admonish the idle, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with them all. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual immorality. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3 through 7. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual immorality, that each one of you know how to control his own body in holiness and honor, not in the passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one transgress and wrong his brother in this matter, because the Lord is, the, is an avenger in all these things, as we told you beforehand and solemnly warned you, for God has not called us for impurity, but in holiness. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 3 through 8. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual immorality, that each one of you know how to control his own body in holiness and honor, not in the passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one transgress and wrong his brother in this matter, because the Lord is an avenger in all these things, as we told you beforehand and solemnly warned you, for God has not called us for impurity, but in holiness. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 1 through 13. Finally, then, brothers, we ask and urge you in the Lord Jesus, that as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God, 
just as you are doing, that you do so more and more, for you know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual immorality, that each one of you know how to control his own body in holiness and honor, not in the passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God. Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 through 25. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, Whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 33. However, let each one of you love his wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 28 through 31. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ does the church. Because we are members of his body, Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1 through 33. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragment offering and sacrifice to God. But sexual immorality and all impurity or covetousness must not be named among you, as is proper among saints. Let there be no filthiness, nor foolishness talk, nor crude joking, which are out of place. But instead, let there be thanksgiving. For you may be sure of this, that everyone who is sexually immoral or impure or who is covetous has no inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1 through 33. I wish you would bear with me in a little foolishness. Do bear with me, for I feel a divine jealousy for you, since I betroth you to one husband to present you as a pure virgin to Christ. But I am afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by his cunning, your thoughts will be led astray from a sincere and pure devotion to Christ. For if someone comes and proclaims another Jesus than the one we proclaimed, or if you received a different spirit from the one you have received, or if you accept a different gospel from the one you accepted, you put up with it readily enough. Indeed, I consider that I am not in the least inferior to these super apostles. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may receive what is due for what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 1 through 58 now i would remind you brothers of the gospel i preach to you which you receive and which you stand and by which you are being saved if you hold fast to the world i preach to you unless you believe in vain 
For I delivered to you as of first importance, which I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 through 13. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have, and if I deliver up my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 31. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were led astray by mute, to mute idols. However, you were led. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking in the spirit of God ever says Jesus is a curse. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except in the Holy Spirit. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1 through 33. For I want you to know, brothers, that our fathers were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea and all ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink for they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them and the rock was Christ. Nevertheless, with most of them, God was not pleased for they were overthrown in the wilderness. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 1 through 27. Am I not free? Am I not an apostle? Have I not seen Jesus our Lord? Are not you my workmanship in the Lord? If to others I am not an apostle, at least I am to you. For you are the seal of my apostleship in the Lord. This is my defense to those who would examine me. Do we not have the right to eat and drink? Do we not have the right to take along a believing wife, as do the other apostles and the brothers of the Lord and Cephas? 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 39. A wife is bound to her husband as long as he lives. But if her husband dies, she is free to be married to whom she wishes, only in the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 4. For the wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does. Likewise, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be enslaved by anything. Romans chapter 8 verses 1 through 39. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of his life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do. By sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit set their minds on the things of the spirit. Romans chapter seven, verse one through 25. Or do you not know Brothers, for I am speaking to those who know the law, that the law is binding only a person, only as he lives. 
For a married woman is bound by law to her husband while he lives. But if her husband dies, she is released from the law of marriage. Accordingly, she will be called an adulteress if she lives with another man while her husband is alive. But if her husband dies, she is free from that law. And if she marries another man, she is not an adulteress. Likewise, my brothers, you also have died to the law through the body of Christ, so that you may belong to another, to him who has been raised from the dead, in order that we may bear fruit for God. For while we were living in the flesh, our sinful passions aroused by the law were at work in the members to bear fruit for our death. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 15 and as shoes for your feet having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 23 now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against the rulers against the authorities against the cosmic powers over this present darkness against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18 Praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication to that end, keep alert with all preservance, making supplication for all saints. Galatians chapter 6 verse 7. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will he also reap. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 5. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 31 So, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 12 Therefore, let anyone who thinks that he stands take heed lest he fall. Romans chapter 8 verse 28 And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. Romans chapter 1 verses 1 through 32 Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle set apart for the gospel of God which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the holy scriptures concerning his son who was descended from David according to the flesh and was declared to be the son of God in power according to the spirit of holiness by his resurrection from the dead Jesus Christ our Lord through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith for the sake of his name among all nations. Acts chapter 17 verse 11. Now these Jews were more noble than those in Thessalonica. They received the word with all eagerness, examining the scriptures daily to see if these things were so. John chapter 3 verses 1 through 36. Now, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Matthew chapter 18, verses 9 through 14. And if your eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. 
it is better for you to enter life with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into the hell of fire. See that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I tell you that in heaven, their angels always see the face of my father who is in heaven. What do you think? If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them has gone astray, does he not leave the 99 on the mountains and go in search of the one that went astray? And if he finds it, truly I say to you, he rejoices over it more than the 99 that were never went astray. So it is not the will of my father who is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. Matthew chapter 6 verse 13. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Matthew chapter 5 verse 29. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. For it is better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body be thrown into hell. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18. Praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all preservance, making supplication for all saints. 